A little over a year ago, I started working at Google as a software engineer in New York City. Google had always been my dream job, and a little over a year ago, I couldn't have been more excited to start. So now fast forward a year, and a lot has changed, so I wanted to talk about it. So to start, let's first talk about all the good things that I've enjoyed about working at Google. You work at a scale that literally only a handful of other companies in the entire world can say that they do, and that comes with problems that some 99% of other companies could only dream of dealing with, like supporting billions of users that need your service 24-7, 365 days a year. And even to this day, I'll still look at graphs at work and I'll have a hard time even comprehending the sheer scale of the metrics that I'm looking at, like the number of customers that we're serving, the QPS that a server is handling, et cetera. And I think it's largely because of the scale that it makes me like to think that my work at Google is somewhat important or is meaningful. And to me, finding meaning in something that I'm doing 40 plus hours a week, every week of my life, I think is really important to me. The next thing that I really like about Google is that I can learn a lot of information from a lot of different people. And at a place like Google, there really is no limit I've found to the amount of stuff that you can learn. And to me, being able to learn at the job and being given the resources to learn and the time is really paramount. And luckily for me, being at Google, I've been provided both. I've found that other jobs I've had in the past, if I'm not constantly learning, the things that I do day to day become really repetitive and monotonous. And when work becomes repetitive and monotonous, I get bored. And when I get bored, I've found that in the past, I tend to look for a different scenery, which means switching jobs. And because of all these different projects that I've worked on with all these different technologies and frameworks, I think I've really enjoyed the past year at Google and the things that I've been able to learn. And finally, I think learning is really important in a job because if you're not learning, I feel like you kind of are stagnating in your career. And that's definitely not something I want to do within the first 10 years of my career. It's way too early for that. The next thing I think working in a large company like Google has really afforded me is external mobility. And I guess this is technically still a theory because I haven't left Google yet, but I do think that there's a lot of value to having a really big name on your resume, and in this case, Google's. I found that having larger companies on your resume really helps ensure that when you're looking for other opportunities, other people want to talk back to you. And I've found personally that this is something that's really sort of valuable for leveling up your career because every single time you move to a different company, I think it affords you the opportunity to talk to bigger, more funded, well-equipped companies that you can then sort of jump between. So every single time you're going to a different place, you're kind of moving up and to the right. And this is something that I definitely value looking back on my career so far, because when I was first coming out of college, there was almost no companies that were interested in even having a talk with me. And even though companies didn't really want to talk to me and it was hard to find a job coming out of college, I like to think of the bright side of this, which is really just the fact that my YouTube channel came out of me not being able to get a job or not finding a job that I really enjoyed after college. And now looking back, it's really sort of surreal to think think about the 180 that I've sort of had within the past five years. Originally, I couldn't find a single company that was interested in talking to me. And now I'll have companies reaching out to me and wanting to talk to me, even if I'm not actually looking for a new opportunity. And I've actually talked about this on Twitter not too long ago. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, you can head over there. Before we go on with our video, I just want to say a quick thank you to today's sponsor, Anchorwork. Anchorwork is actually kind enough to send me three of their different products. The first one being the Anchorwork PowerConf S500 speakerphone, the UltraClear PowerCom Bluetooth speakerphone, and the Anchor PowerCom C300 Smart Full HD webcam. It's also great that Anchorwork provides special offers for enterprise purchasing for all of these products. You can either log into an Amazon Enterprise account, or you can contact customer service on Anchorwork's enterprise purchase page of the Anchorwork official website for special discounts. The C300 Smart Full HD webcam has 1080p resolution, 60 frames per second, with true to life colors and AI control. The S500 speakerphone is the premium speakerphone for both personal and business use, and you can also daisy chain two of the products together if you're in a meeting room, and it supports noise canceling and hi fi sound. And for the ultra clear PowerConf Bluetooth speakerphone, it's more for a home environment. It has six different mics, it has voice pickup, 24 hour call time, and it supports Bluetooth and USB-C. Anchorwork also has the BR300 USB video conference bar, which is great for 4K resolution and an immersive audio experience. Anchorwork is also doing a giveaway with me. So if you guys are interested in entering the giveaway, check the link in the description. Thanks so much again for Anchorwork for sponsoring the video. Very similar and probably even simpler than external mobility, something I think you're granted working in a large company like Google is internal mobility. And because of how big some of these companies are, it kind of feels like you can find a new opportunity without ever actually leaving the company that you're at. Because companies like Google support so many different products, it's pretty easy to move from one product area to a different product area and actually feel like you're having a totally different experience at a totally different company. Companies like Google and many others support countless products, all of which can expose you to new people, learnings, management styles, technologies, cultures, and more, which oftentimes is many of the things that people actually crave when they're trying to find a new job. Moving internally in a large company not only simplifies the stress of the job hunt, but I also think it reduces its difficulty. 
When you already work at the company, they already have data points for how you perform. And because of that, it's pretty simple to move between teams. And oftentimes, especially at larger companies, I've found that really, if you wanna move from team A to team B, all you have to do is sort of express interest to the other team's manager, and then maybe have like a fit call with them or their teammates to see if you would like working on the team and then to see if they would like working with you. And staying with the company and not moving externally also has additional benefits like continuing your vesting cycle if you receive RSUs or restricted stock units, and you don't have to relearn internal tooling. The next thing I really enjoy about working at Google is I feel like I just have very smart coworkers. And these smart coworkers not only are good at what they do, but they've done what they've been doing for many times the amount of time that I've been doing this professionally. Because of this, I found that really even having simple interactions, like a 15 minute conversation with someone more senior or who has more experience than me can really teach me something that most people might take way longer to learn on their own. I actually think this is not only super beneficial for Googlers, but I think it's also really beneficial for the company as a whole. As you sort of attract more and more talented people, I think more and more talented people want to join you. It really spins this flywheel of getting good pools of candidates into the company. I think compensation is a little tricky because it's all relative, but I'm very happy with my compensation at Google. Luckily for me, it actually affords me to do whatever I want in life without worrying too much. And I think that's super valuable and I'm very thankful to be able to do that. And just as a simple word of advice, make sure that you actually are deciding what is enough for you in terms of compensation, not places like Blind or other weird corners of the internet. And honestly, the problem with money is you can always make more of it, but you don't actually always need to. And after a certain point, the extra money that you're gonna make probably won't drastically change your life the way that going from $30,000 a year to $100,000 a year might. So make sure you know when enough is enough. I pretty routinely only work as much as I actually want to or as much as I need to to get the work that I've committed to done. And I've always been able to do that within regular working hours, which is awesome. My team and manager also definitely trust me, which I really appreciate because now I can sort of sign off early on days that I need to or take vacation and sick days as needed. And that flexibility is much appreciated. Finally, for the good, I think I just enjoy the stability of working in a place like Google. I don't really feel worried that my job is not gonna be there the way that I might at a startup. And I actually talked about this at my first job out of college. And there's a video on that, so if you guys wanna go check that out. But one day I walked into the office and I was literally laid off. And I don't have that fear here. And I think that's a good thing knowing when I go to sleep at night, I don't feel super worried. Even in a bad economic downturn, I think Google has the resources to weather the storm. And so I think that just helps me sleep a little bit better every single night. Now let's talk about some of the things that aren't so good at Google or maybe the things that are bad. The first thing for me that I personally am not enjoying about Google or something that I wish I could change and I would love to change if I could is just the fact that I'm remote from my team. So my entire team is based in California and I am currently based in New York City. And probably like any single other person in the world at this point, I am weirdly used to just working remotely and staring at people on a computer screen. And while I'm super used to this, if I could wave a magic wand, that's definitely the first thing that would change about working at Google is I would love to be in New York specifically with my team. Because I really, after COVID especially, I really miss seeing people face to face. I miss being able to get lunch with people, talk about a problem over coffee, go for a walk, do things outside of work, do anything that I can with them physically in person as opposed to sort of like this through a screen. The next thing that isn't so great about Google is you can definitely feel like a small cog in a giant machine because you literally are one of 150,000 employees at the company. And to this effect, this is something that really bothers me, which is just that you can't understand everything. It's literally impossible, I would say. You cannot know everything that happens at Google the way that you might know everything that happens in a code base at a startup, which I definitely miss because it bothers me when I don't know everything or I can't figure out something or I'm not sure how something happens and it just feels like magic because then I have to go down a rabbit hole trying to learn it and it just feels like it's it's like an endless depth for search because at Google, one thing leads you to 20 things, those 20 things lead you to a thousand things. And so even things that are small, I think by Google standard, they're still pretty big. So it's even hard to know everything about a small section of something because the scale and the things that you're doing stuff at is still really large. And so while sort of like working on stuff that like feels like it matters and it's at a big scale and it's important, I guess, you can still sort of just feel like a number, which isn't always a great feeling. The next thing I think is a little bit tough for me sometimes about working at a place like Google is it feels like all the hard problems have already been solved. And sort of rewind a little bit, I think Google has probably changed a lot through the past two decades. In the early 2000s, tech giants really started taking off. They started having the scale and they started facing problems that I'm assuming no other companies really had faced until that point. And so I think this is where, you know, a lot of engineers and a lot of smart people at Google stepped in. But mostly I think about two people like Jeff Dean and Sanjay and how sort of they together along with a bunch of other people solved the, the really hard things that they had to solve in that moment and figure out how to scale this company so 
that it can support the people that they do, right? The billions of people that it does. And so to me, it sort of feels like from the outside, these brilliant world-class engineers stepped in and designed ridiculous, innovative, genius solutions like MapReduce, Bigtable, and Spanner, among you know countless other things that they've done together and as a group. But now at my job, it feels like I just use Spanner or I just stand on top of Spanner and then I do normal engineer things. I don't really do those things that they were doing. It feels like you're sort of past the heyday of we need to solve these really hard, complex problems. And so unless you're in a place like DeepMind or Google Research or Waymo or any of these other like crazy moonshot bets that Google has, it feels like you're really just working at a startup that is on easy mode in the sense that 99% of stuff is abstract from you and you just need to put the icing on the cake. So don't get me wrong, I think these things are definitely really awesome and it's made my life as a software engineer way easier, but at the same time I think it might be nice to try and tackle some of those challenges that have inevitably been taken away. So chances are nowadays it feels like anything you're asked to do has already been done. And so it really just becomes a matter of reading, reading the documentation, reading about how to learn this language, or reading code that's already been implemented that probably is doing the exact same thing that you need to do. The next thing that might be a little bit tough for some people working in a large company like Google is just the fact that the internal tooling that you have does not transfer to other places. So because Google works at the scale that they do, they literally make their own internal tools for pretty much everything. No, like literally everything. Everything you could think about that you use outside of the big tech bubble, there's probably an internal tool at Google that is for the exact same thing that they've built. And while these tools are like super well supported, have incredible documentation and work really well, it just doesn't go with you when you leave the company. And in that sense, it's a little bit frustrating because you might have to learn five different types of companies internal tooling if you go to these really big tech companies. Whereas if you just were working in a smaller company or a startup, chances are the technology used over here at company A is gonna be the exact same technology that you used at company B. Something also that really personally scares me about working at Google right now is that I feel like I'm becoming complacent and I think this is because my job is really great and I love that, but it also scares me a little bit because I've noticed that most other times in my career, I've sort of been at a place, but I've always been looking for the next place or the next opportunity or the next thing that will advance me further to get to wherever it is that I'm trying to go. And now I feel like I don't really have that clear goal in the future. That is, I want to do this. and. That's a little bit weird for me, I think. And I think even the scarier thing is that as time continues to go on and as you stay at a company longer and longer, I think you become more and more complacent. I think it becomes easier and easier to make the decision to stay because there's actually more inertia to leaving now, right? You know all the internal tools more, you're gonna vest the next cycle of your RSUs at the next quarter, whatever it is, people come up with tons of different excuses, but I feel like it's scary that I don't know how long I can stay here because it feels like there's nothing wrong so I could just stay forever. And so for the first time in my career, I feel like I'm not going out and scouring for what's next. I'm just happy with what I have. Finally, this isn't necessarily specific to Google, but I think it's just important to remember in general. And that's that work is a four letter word. And working at Google has been great and I've really enjoyed the past year, but at the end of the day, work is simply work. And I think that this is something that's pretty important to remember. I think a lot of companies like to flash all the shiny things that they give employees, but actually when I reflect on them, I haven't even partaken in them. For example, a year has gone by and I haven't scheduled any of my free massages that I get. I haven't taken a nap in a nap pod during work hours and I haven't played a single video game in the games room. So while all these large companies try and offer these crazy, insane, illustrious perks, behind it, it's just work. So those are some of the things I've enjoyed about working at Google. Those are some of the things that I have not enjoyed about working at Google. If you guys enjoyed this video, do me a favor, drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more. I'll see you guys next time.